Hello and welcome again to my physics video lecture supplement series. Today's lecture video is going to be a little example involving the Atwoods machine. And actually, this is going to be a two part example. So, in the first part, I just want to consider the Atwoods machine under the ideal condition. And uh, the ideal condition for an Atwoods machine says that we have a massless string and a massless frictionless pulley. And so all that we end up really being concerned with are the two hanging masses. So there's going to be one mass hung on either side of the pulley. And usually these two masses have different uh, well, they're different masses, different weights as a result. And so in the ideal case, we actually have a system of two equations. Um, and the two equations basically come out of Newton's second law. Basically, what it says is the, the first equation, the top equation, is looking at the mass uh, on the left side uh, of the pulley, the lighter mass in other words, and it basically says that there's two forces acting upon this mass. One is from the tension of the string straight up, one is from the uh, weight of this thing straight down. Then I have a second equation uh, which goes with the second mass, which is the mass on the right hand side of the pulley. And again, the two forces acting on this are the weight going down and the force of tension from the string going up. And in the ideal case, um, we set the two tensions equal to each other. So force of tension one is equal to force of tension two, which can then just be represented maybe by force of tension. Um, be that as it may, what you end up with is a system of two equations with two unknowns, where the unknowns are the acceleration and the force of tension. So to solve, um, basically we can set these two forces of tension e equal to each other, and that means that the right-hand sides of these two equations are going to be equal to each other. So this basically means that uh, M1G plus M1A is going to be equal to M2G minus M2A. And um, what we want to solve for then is the acceleration. So let's get all the acceleration terms on one side and all of the non-acceleration terms, or the, the terms that are not multiplying A on the other side. So on the left-hand side, we want these two terms. So I'm going to move these to left. And on the right-hand side, we want these two terms. So basically what that looks like is subtract this term from both sides and add this term to both sides. And so what you end up with is M1A plus M2A is equal to M2G minus M1G. And so this side that has M1A plus M2A, the Canada side, if you will, uh, basically you want to distribute the A. And so that's going to look like M1 plus M2A. And then this other side, the, the G side, uh, we want to do the same thing, distribute the G. So M2 minus M1G. 
So now we want to solve for this acceleration. And what we do is just divide both sides by the sum of this mass. So it's basically the difference between the two masses divided by the sum of the two masses times g. And so there we have it. We've got now a solution for the acceleration in the ideal case. Uh, if we have a 2 kilogram mass and a 2.5 kilogram mass, what that ends up looking like is um, that we have 2.5 kilograms minus 2.0 kilograms divided by 2.5 kilograms plus 2.0 kilograms times 9.80 meters per second squared. So um, this top part then is 0.5 kilograms, the bottom part is 4.5 kilograms, so basically one ninth of g, and that ends up being about 1.09 meters per second squared. So in the ideal uh, case with the ideal pulley, and the massless friction of the string, we end up in, in a 2 kilogram mass balance against a 2.5 kilogram mass, we end up getting an acceleration of 1.09 meters per second squared. So I'm going to go ahead and write that result one last time. So this was the result for the ideal case. Uh, that means basically that the uh, pulley itself is ignored and that the two tensions are equal. And the result was, again, that we got A equals the difference in mass divided by the total mass times g, and that was, once again, 1.09 meters per second squared. Okay, so that basically gets us the uh, result for an ideal Atwood's machine. Um, what I want to do next, uh, basically in the next video, is look at what happens if we include the mass. And, and therefore, we have a non-zero moment of inertia <coughs> for the pulley. So, uh, thanks for watching part one.